Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, here with a video, a little analytical breakdown video using machine learning to make predictions about end of the year NBA awards. And this is a perfect time to do it. We're in the middle of the all-star break, about dead center, right halfway through the season. So we have a decent sample size to really project forward, see how the year's gonna go. And I think it's a really interesting topic as there's a lot of narratives going around surrounding these awards, specifically the MVP. Uh, LeBron James, Luka Doncic were heavy favorites coming into the year to win the award. And unfortunately, whether it be due to winning or injuries and stuff, they haven't lived up to MVP standards, in my opinion, just from the eye test. And even despite that being the case, a lot of people still have LeBron James as their MVP this year. So we'll see if the numbers really back that up, if the eye test or he's really having an MVP season. And even a award like the Defensive Player of the Year, we look at a guy on the Toronto Raptors, Fred Van Vliet who is absolutely thieving this season, stealing the ball from Ben Simmons and Giannis Antetokounmpo. He, he's been a pest down there on, on defense, obviously a great on-ball defender, and people in Raptors land are saying whether or not this guy should make a run for Defensive Player of the Year, or at least an all-defensive team. So we'll see if the numbers, we'll see if he gets projected to, to have any chance of winning those awards or Defensive Player of the Year. So. Specifically, those are the two awards we're going to look at. If you want me to make videos on other ones, definitely let me know in the comment section below. But I built six machine learning models, three for each award to really make solid predictions. And yeah, without further ado, let's dive straight into the first uh, the first award we're going to be looking at, and that's the MVP award. So that's uh, the stats that we're using to really make these predictions. They're on the screen above me here. And the first one is a player's standing. If they're on a good team, they're more likely to win MVP award. That's something that's been the case seemingly every year with exception to that year, Russell Westbrook averaged a triple double. Uh, then we look at whether or not they're an all-star. Obviously, this seems to be like essential criteria to win an MVP award. So those two are there. Then there's the obvious points, rebounds, assists, field goal percentage, the basic things people look at. And then value over replacement player. So how well, how much better you are than the guy that's coming in and replacing you and then win shares. So how much value you're adding to a team's win. Those are the statistics that really gave the best outputs, gave the highest accuracy. So let's let's look at the first model. We'll, we'll pull that up on the screen. And the first one, I used a random force regression predictor. And this, this gave interesting results. Obviously, Luka's there to be found, but no LeBron James, the, the head of the MVP award, is not in the top, what is that, seven, eight guys, nine guys, not in the top there. So the, the leader in this board is Joel Embiid. He's a guy that's certainly leading the Sixers in the Eastern Conference, having a phenomenal season, putting up monstrous numbers. Nikola Jokic, despite uh, the Denver slow start, they, they've really bounced back, and Jokic has just been carrying that team. Thankfully, Jamal Murray has bounced back as of late. I think he's averaging 28 points per game over his last 10 games, so definitely a, a big performance. Josh did a good breakdown on him in our last video, looking at all the Canadians, so that's, a, that's an interesting look, interesting board. We had a couple of Brooklyn Nets there, but that's just one model. We'll, we'll take a look at the second one, and I'll throw it up on the screen now. Again, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic leading the way. Giannis, who's gotten no talk, is third in this board. Got James Harden. Do have a LeBron James appearance, Damian Lillard. But at the end there, we, we see Ashton Higgins. I have no idea who this guy is. I have, uh, before doing this video, I have I just didn't know who the guy was. Uh, he's got he's got a cool, a cool smile. He's the, the highest quality image I could find of him was on the Iowa Wolves. So I don't know if he should really be in the company. I'll pull it back up here. Uh, with the Joel Embiid, LeBron James, Damian Lillard, but shout out Ashton Higgins. I, I definitely messed that name up, but you know, he's getting up there in the support right back to regression model. Uh, I'll, I'll give myself a DeMar Kill gold star on that. I, I built all these models. So the weird outputs, it, it, it is what it is when they're showing up on the screen. So there's a, uh, there's Ashton Higgins and we'll look at the, the final, uh, model I built for the MVP predictor to really give a good idea of what it's outputting, what the numbers are saying. And the final one is a K nearest neighbors predictor. And again, Joel Embiid leading the way. Nikola Jokic took a step back in this one. Giannis up there in the top three. Damian Lillard getting some love with this model. Uh, Kawhi, former Raptor, got his jersey put up. Got, I don't know if people have noticed that the past couple videos, got the Kawhi jersey up there, but he, he's up in the top four. The Clippers have been sold this season. Jokic down below, as I mentioned, LeBron. CJ McCollum, who's having a nasty year this year. He was prior to injury. 
the injuries were not taken into account games played especially in a season like this it's really tough to gauge as some teams lost some games some didn't so i left it out it only hurt the predictions so it's a uh, yeah the the common theme when you're looking at the mvp what the machine learning models are saying it's not lebron james who a lot of analysts and people want to win mvp and i get it because he won the championship he's still an assault lakers team he was not at the tops of any of these models and the clear number one guy it seems to be joel Embiid, and he's not a guy you really think of when you say top five player in the league you know the players that come to mind are Giannis, who's not going to win it again because he won the the previous two awards even though his stats say he probably should be in the top two or three uh, LeBron, obviously Le Kawhi, Kevin Durant, James Harden, these types of players, but Joel Embiid has really sort of outshined them all this season, leading the Sixers to tops in the Eastern Conference. I believe they're still at the top. If not, they're fighting for position with the Brooklyn Nets. So Joel Embiid, the machine learning models say that he should win MVP, so that's my prediction. We'll see if it actually comes true by the end of the year. Disappointed, guy OG didn't get it, but that's all you can do. So we'll, we'll take a look at the, the second award and we'll see if any Raptors really make the cut on this case. So the I'll pull up the model here. The first one, again, a random force regression prediction and the Stifle Tower, the guy that was so locked down last season, he shut down the NBA, Rudy Gobert. He's at the top of this, uh, this prediction list. And then Defensive Player of the Year last year, Giannis coming second, Joel Embiid, who I have as MVP, coming third, and his teammate Ben Simmons, who I've seen been getting a lot of love across the NBA lately in terms of winning a Defensive Player of the Year, he's only fifth on this list. So I'll pull it back up here, and not with a pretty sub pretty far behind Rudy Gobert, Giannis, and these players. So we'll see if he gets any more love going into the the rest of this, the rest of these models. Nicholas Claxton got up there. Uh, some of these, the, the data is very skewed in terms of how many players have won an award in the past, so you get some weird names thrown into uh, models like this, but you really got to look at the top of the top, the cream of the crop when making insights and analysis from these predictions. But yeah, that's the that's the first model. It's a random force regression model. We'll take a look at the, the second one. And this is, a, again, a K nearest neighbors prediction. Rudy Gobert once again topping the field ahead of Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and those are the three guys that really seem to be at the top of these two lists. Nerlens Noel, a player that a lot of people thought when he was a rookie should have been a, a defensive player of the year, a perennial defensive player of the year contender. Unfortunately, he really hasn't lived up to those expectations. Jokic making an appearance. Uh, interesting, and we, we see the, the share of votes really going down as you go down the list. Miles Turner is a guy that's been getting a lot of blocks. A lot of block shots but the Pacers they've struggled a little bit this season even though they're still right in the mix they're a little bit behind that that pack in the middle of the Eastern Conference so that's a that's the list it seems like the the three players running away with it right now seem to be Joel Embiid uh, Giannis and uh, Rudy Gobert the stifle tower so those are the guys that really look for in those two models but the final one is leaving the best for last and there's a lot of data points on this for good reason again Rudy Gobert, Miles Turner making an appearance, Anthony Davis making an appearance in this one. This is just a basic linear regression model. Uh, Giannis, LeBron, Joel Embiid, they're all making appearances. A lot of guys that make a lot of sense, but it's not the head of this list you want to really look at. It's it's the back end, because those are the true players. And unfortunately, we got no love for Fred Van Vliet in this list, but Chris Boucher making it in, making the cut on this extended list here. He's, he's getting some love for potential Defensive Player of the Year by the, the Linear Regression Model. Former Raptors Marc Gasol, Jakob Pertl also getting little shoutouts in there as well. So, gotta gotta give love to the, the Raptors, the former Raptors. Nice to see a few people make the cut, make the, the, the range of the upper echelon defenders in the NBA. And I'm sure if I made a prediction for Defensive Player of the Year, Chris Boucher would have to be in there. But... I guess we'll to dive in to really break down, get the insights from these models. Clearly, Rudy Gobert seems to be the the by and far favorite for defensive player this season, and not because he shut down the league last year, but the Utah Jazz are phenomenal this year. They're at the top of the Western Conference. They're exceeding everyone's expectations, and a lot of that has to do with the defensive end. Rudy Gobert, even in the past, I think he's a former defensive player of the year anyways. He's, he's a guy that just protects that rim. The offensive uh, stats love him, and 
Oh, I, I forgot to even mention the, the criteria for this. Again, it, it, we looked at team standing, all-star, steals, blocks, defensive win shares, uh, de defensive rebounding percentage, block percentage, steal percentage. So that's basically how many steals you're generating compared to the rest of your team, what percentage of your team steals you're generating, you know, value of replacement player, win shares, and defensive box score plus minus. Because I know Riker loves the plus minus. Had to throw that in there to get some love. But those were the qu criteria, and Rudy Gobert really showed out on top. Uh, th those are the big takeaways. So if I had to make a prediction as to who will be the defensive player of the year, it's got to be Rudy Gobert, MVP, Joel Embiid. That's what they're saying. And unfortunately, Fred Van Vliet did not make the cut, didn't make the list. But it's tough to really gauge on ball production, on ball value when looking at these stats. So guards, again, you look at these lists, there's not many guards to be seen in here. Not many small guys. Chris Paul makes an appearance in this one. Uh, really no small guys in this list for linear regression. And... Again, no, no smaller players. So there's, it's a little bit biased. It's biased towards the big men, but I guess the award, that's how it usually is. So that's, uh, that's the way we're looking at it there. Fred Van Vliet, I think he'll be able to squeeze into one of those all defensive point guard positions, but we'll see what happens in, in that case. At least Chris Boucher got some love on these lists. But yeah, Rudy Gobert, defensive player of the year. Joel Embiid, your MVP. LeBron James really shouldn't be at the, the tops of these lists. He His stats really don't prove it. The Lakers don't even have a top record right now. So I know they're dealing with injuries and stuff. And he's having a good year, but he shouldn't be in the upper echelon conversation. Same with Luka Doncic. And the final point I want to make just looking at all this data and stuff is Giannis Antetokounmpo is a guy, yes, it's tough to give it to a player that who's back-to-back -back MVPs, who's won Defensive Player of the Year last year, but he is consistently in the top of these models. I think just because of his previous seasons, he's become a little bit underrated for uh, for these awards. People are sort of looking over him, and I guess it makes sense when you flame out in the playoffs like the Milwaukee Bucks did last year, but gotta give a little love to Giannis, even though he didn't give any love to Toronto coming here or signing that five-year extension with the Milwaukee Bucks. It is what it is, but... Uh, yeah, you guys are the best for making this far. Uh, shorter video, but uh, a lot of content. Love. Tried to do this all in one take, so let me know what you guys think of these style of videos. Forgot to plug it, but we're on the road to 20k subscribers, so we really appreciate if you told your friends about the channel, subscribed if you're not subscribed. I think about 50% of you guys aren't subscribed to watch the video, and a, a lot of effort goes into these... Uh, data science analytical videos so let me know if you like them first of all and if you want me to make more and if you do like it please leave a like get in the like section i'd really appreciate it uh, it helps out the algorithm and stuff getting getting further so if you like it hop in the like section you guys are the best to make this far check out the twitter the instagram all the cool stuff the tiktok the articles everything's going wild so you guys are the best i'm signing off cheers